In our last segment on energy, we took a look at potential and kinetic energy. And we said that the only way to measure the amount of potential energy you have is to convert it into kinetic, take it out of the bank, in other words. We also mentioned that the device you use is called a calorimeter. This is a calorimeter, specifically a bomb calorimeter. Now, don't worry, it's not going to blow up on you. What you do with this is it's a container that is very well insulated so that heat can't get in, heat can't get out, or at least minimum amount. Into this, we're going to put a measured mass of water. And then we have a reaction chamber that's hooked up to a battery with a little coil inside that gets hot. It's kind of like a light bulb filament gets hot when you add electricity to it. This filament gets hot when you add electricity to it. You put food stuff in there, so you want to find out how many calories something has. So what you do is you put the food stuffs in there, and you pass the wire through it, and you ignite it on fire. And as it burns, as it releases its energy, the energy gets released to the surrounding water. And there's a little stirring fan in here so that the water gets evenly mixed throughout the entire process. Then there's also a thermometer that's stuck in here so that you can measure how much the temperature changes by over the course of the reaction. When the temperature stops rising, you know your reaction is done. So you have a measured mass of water you have a certain change in temperature. All you need to know now is how fast does water heat up? And that's going to be the next thing we look at. If you go to reference table B in your New York State reference tables, you'll notice a property referred to as the specific heat capacity of water. This is basically how well water absorbs heat. It absorbs heat at the rate of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. What that means is, if you've got a gram of water and you want to heat it up by 1 degree Celsius, you have to add 4.18 joules to it. Okay, water heats up at a steady rate. Now we have everything we need. We know how many grams of water there are in the cup. We know how much the temperature changed by when you carry out the reaction in that water. And you know the rate at which water heats up. Notice that degree Celsius is part of temperature change. That grams is part of the mass of the water and joules will give us our potential energy. Using the equation, Q equals MC delta T. This one can be found on reference table T on the back of the New York State reference tables. MC delta T, the amount of heat in joules is equal to the mass of water you're heating up in the calorimeter times the rate at which the water heats up, the specific heat capacity, times the temperature change that the water undergoes during the change. Let's take a look at a few examples of this. A reaction is carried out in 100 grams of water at 23 degrees Celsius, so that's our starting temperature. When the reaction is done, the new temperature is 48.7 degrees. So the first thing we might ask is, is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? As we showed you yesterday, if you convert potential energy to kinetic energy, that's called exothermic. And if you convert kinetic to potential, that's endothermic. But what about temperature? What does that mean? Well, if you're converting to kinetic energy, you're going to have more kinetic energy. And since kinetic energy is measured with temperature, an exothermic reaction increases its temperature change. So you'll go from maybe 10 degrees to 30 degrees. An endothermic reaction uses up kinetic energy. And when you use it up, you have less of it. So the temperature goes down, negative delta T. Maybe from 30 degrees, dropping down to 10. So if the temperature goes up, it's exothermic. If the temperature goes down, it's endothermic. Now, since we're starting at 23 degrees and we're ending at 48.7 degrees, the temperature went up. Therefore, you are converting potential energy into kinetic, exothermic. How can you tell? The temperature increased. Got hotter. Now here's an interesting question, did the water absorb or release energy? Well, apparently, if the temperature went up, that means the water absorbed that energy in order for the temperature to go up. The water had to gain that energy in order for that temperature to rise. So the water absorbed energy. The change, the reaction, released the energy to the water. How many joules were involved in this reaction? Q equals MC delta T. Now we're looking for joules, 
And according to the reference table, joules is Q, heat. So we're trying to solve for Q. I'll circle it so that I know that's what I'm trying to solve for. The mass of the water that was in the calorimeter was 100 grams. All right? The specific heat capacity of water is always going to be the same for liquid water, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. The last thing we need to know is how much did the temperature change by? Well, it went from 23 degrees up to 48.7, which is a temperature change of 25.7 degrees. Now you can see what happens with this equation. The Celsius will cancel, the grams will cancel, and leave us with joules on both sides. Plug in the numbers into the calculator, 100 times 4.18 times 25.7 gives us a total amount of joules, 10,742.6. But remember, this being chemistry, we have to round off our answer. Since we're multiplying, we use sig figs. This has four sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs, so we need to round off to three sig figs. Our final answer is 10,700 joules. And that's the amount of potential energy that was absorbed by the water during the change, released by the reaction during the change. Joules isn't the only thing you can calculate from the equation. Specific heat's always going to be the same. That's always going to be 4.18. But you could also find the mass of water in the cup if you knew how many joules you added and how much the temperature changed by. Likewise, if you know how many joules you added and what the mass of water in the cup was, you can predict how much your temperature is going to change by.